uh, particles are in one momentum state at rest, it would correspond to the state uh, uh, P equals zero. As you increase the temperature, uh, the uh, occupation decreases and goes to zero at what's called the lambda point, uh, where the uh, uh, helium goes from the superfluid heliums to nor normal helium. In the superfluid state, the helium flows uh, without friction uh, through uh, uh, narrow cavities, as indicated on the left. If you uh, measure the viscosity uh, by, say, ro rotating a disk, you'd uh, measure much larger values. So, uh, if you make a ring of a very narrow cavity so that the helium can circulate around the ring, uh, the circulation is quantized just as are the uh, electrons in the Bohr orbit of an atom, so that the circulation, the integral of the velocity over the uh, over the uh, uh, over the path, is an integral multiple of h over the mass of the helium atom. If you're talking about helium, and so the velocity for a circular ring is. Uh, and uh, given by a multiple of h over r times the mass. Uh, this uh, quantization of circulation has been observed in recent years. Uh, uh, the, uh, the angular momentum of the circulating helium uh, can be measured because uh, if you try to tip it, you get the forces like you have on a spinning top and so you can measure the circulation, although you can't see it. And uh, the uh, circulation is quantized, just as it would be in an atom, although this is a, a macroscopic uh, object. Uh, this uh, shows the basis of the so-called two-fluid model which has been widely used to account for the uh, properties of helium. Uh, if you have, uh, uh, if you have uh, a superfluid helium flowing in the channel and the walls are uh, stationary, uh, there are so-called elementary excitations, the simplest of which are, are just uh, high-frequency sound waves, uh, which uh, uh, correspond to the normal component. So if you have a helium flowing with a velocity Vs and the temperature is above the absolute zero, uh, uh, then the flow is decreased uh, if the walls moved with a velocity Vn, the total flow is given by the flow of the excitations, or, which uh, correspond to the normal component of the fluid, and the superfluid component. As a temperature of about one degree, say about half the uh, temperature below the superfluid transition temperature, uh, over 90% is superfluid, and the normal components only uh, less than 10%. This gives a Galilean invariance in the classical uh, system. You can describe uh, the uh, properties in any reference frame uh, moving with a, a relative velocity, you, you de define the same states, although you use different variables to describe them, and the physics is the same uh, regardless of the 
uh, reference frame. In a superfluid, you have to specify the state of macroscopic occupation. If the, uh, uh, if the state of macroscopic occupation corresponds to a flow Vs, then you have to specify that. And then the uh, thermal excitations can come into equilibrium with the walls or what have you and uh, uh, that gives rise to the normal component. But you, uh, uh, but you uh, 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 up to the uh, transi uh, lambda point, the transition temperature, you still have some superfluid flow. So this is the basis for the two fluid model, which has been uh, widely used, uh, it can be derived uh, from, uh, uh, from theory. Uh, the, uh, the flow can be uh, as potential flow, uh, which you can describe as being the gradient of a velocity potential. And uh, as I said, mentioned earlier, no vorticity uh, the, the velocity potential is proportional to the phase of the wave. I don't think you want to go into the... But this shows how you can have a counterflow of uh, normal and uh, super uh, uh, flow. Uh, you can have, uh, if you have a temperature gradient, uh, the thermal excitations, the uh, high frequency sound waves, and what have you, will tend to drift down from high temperature to low temperature. That could be compensated by a superfluid flow in the opposite direction. So the uh, superfluid has very high uh, thermal conductivity. It has a uh, 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 many strange uh, properties. Uh, one thing you can do is make a super leak, which is a very, a very tightly compressed powder, which is practically impervious to flow of uh, normal fluid, but uh, superfluid can flow through it like a sieve because the superfluid component uh, uh, has no friction, uh, zero viscosity. And so if you put in a, uh, a, uh, uh, something which prevents the, uh, not, not, uh, the uh, normal flow, just you have a, a superfluid flow and heat it, uh, the superfluid rushes in to uh, compensate the higher temperature you get from the radiation, and you got, uh, find a fountain which can be as high as 30 centimeters high. Uh, this shows another interesting property of a superfluid helium. Uh, you can't uh, keep it in a beaker. Uh, if you try to keep it in a beaker, it, the film would flow form on the uh, surfaces of the beaker which creep up the inside, down the outside, and drip off the bottom, as uh, indicated on the right. And uh, the other two diagrams uh, show what happens if the uh, riser, uh, I think the, uh, I think now I have the videotape. Uh, this videotape was, uh, made by <clears throat> the videotape was uh, made at uh, St. Andrews uh, University by uh, a professor who was uh, uh, 
one of the discoveries of these unusual properties I've been talking about. The first part of the videotape uh, just shows helium boiling and uh, when you get below the lambda point, the superconducting transition temperature, it suddenly becomes clear because of the high heat capacity, no bubbles form. And then if you warm it back up again, uh, the bubbles start forming. Uh, there it starts boiling. Uh, now you're above the lambda point. It's a nor normal liquid now. Uh, See how to, how to, see how to turn the turn the slide off. This will uh, take about five minutes. The original uh, film, which is made by Jack Allen, who is a uh, a uh, good friend of mine, golfing buddy at St. Andrews. Uh, and in his retirement years, he made this uh, film. Uh, I think the next is the fountain effect. Too much heating, it forms a beautiful canopy. But uh, I think it's uh, uh, a very thin canopy. I forgot just how many atom layers, and only about a hundred or so atom layers, very, very thin. shows the uh, flow through a uh, super leak, I believe that's the one. When the, when the bath temperature is above the uh, uh, transition temperature, uh, there's a super leak at the bottom of the vessel. And when it's uh, the temperatures below the lambda transition, it uh, flows out through the super leak. I think the ne next one. that you can't keep uh, superfluid helium in a beaker, it'll uh, climb out. We haven't reached that stage yet. This is still flow through a super leak. And the next one will be the I believe the flow, yeah, there's your beaker. And uh, when the temperature is below the uh, lambda point, it starts dripping off the bottom 